Um, and what are we going to be talking about today? Um, we are going to be talking about, actually today and next week, permitted that, you know, Holy Spirit doesn't go too crazy during the baptism service, and I actually get a chance to talk. We'll see. Um, the, this week and next week, we're going to be talking about the gift of prophecy. Okay? I felt some of you clench up when I said that, and I felt some of you get excited. It's okay. Take a deep breath. We're going to be good. Um, I love this topic, and I'm excited to preach about it and teach about it, because this one in particular, for some reason, um, we have past woundings, past experiences, or just faulty understandings of what the prophetic is and how it works, and we take those circumstances and those lenses into meetings, into seasons where the prophetic is operating, and because we have a lack of understanding based on what scripture says and how it works, we approach it with all this fear, all this stuff. We have all this baggage coming into it. And we don't realize that, um, number one, the prophetic is not just for a few highly gifted individuals. Let me say it again. The prophetic is not just for a few highly gifted individuals. Because if you remember and you pay attention as you read through the Old Testament, that was the Old Testament model. The Holy Spirit landed on a few, a few people prophesied. But even in that context, the people of God had a hunger in them saying something about this just landing on a few people isn't right. Because there's a story in the Old Testament where Moses, um, the Spirit has descended upon him. He's known to be a prophet. And then some of his right-hand men come up, running up to him and say, Moses, Moses, there's these other people who are prophesying in the camp. We want them to go stop. And Moses says, no, do not forbid them. I would that all God's people were prophets. That even then, when the law was being given, there was something stirred in the heart of Moses that says, this is the way things are right now, but this is not how it's supposed to be. And you move forward into Joel chapter 2. I, was, I didn't plan on launching immediately into preaching, but here we go. You launch forward into Joel chapter 2. And Joel, in talking about the birth of what is going to be the church in the day of the Lord, he says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And on my manservants and my maidservants, I will pour out my spirit. What is this talking about? It's talking about that when the Holy Spirit is poured out, one of the things that's going to mark the people of God is a prophetic spirit. That what once used to be confined to leaders and prophets is now going to be spread abroad across every person who calls on the name of Jesus. So one of the reasons why it's important that we talk about, teach on the gift of prophecy is because you need to know what's in you. And you need to know how this is going to work. And here's another dynamic. We have been contending in the church in America for years for God to pour out his spirit again and for revival to hit our country. Amen? Here's something that happens in revival. People who don't know up from down because it's a gift that the Lord gives, get filled with the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden they've got a gift that is accurate, that is powerful, but they don't know, how. what do I do with this? I used to go to bed every single night, wouldn't have a dream, now all of a sudden I'm dreaming every night and I'm waking up and all, all of a sudden my dreams are coming true the next day. Or I'm starting to see visions when I'm praying and I'm getting information about people and the Lord's telling me about things that are coming and he's giving me encouraging words for people. What, what do I do with this? So even if you buy into the lie that you're not a quote unquote prophetic person, I'll let that sit there. Even if you buy into that lie, even if you buy into that lie, it would behoove you to understand how the prophetic works because there are going to be people around you who God fills with his spirit, fills them with a, an extreme prophetic gift and a prophetic unction, and they're going to be looking to you to disciple them. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Ask me how I know. When I tell you, one of, uh, for a while here, I was involved, very involved in the youth ministry. 
When I tell you it is incredibly common, actually much more common than you would believe, for people to be what the Bible would describe as seers, meaning that for whatever reason, the way that God's wired them, when they look around, oftentimes the way that I can see you, the way that you can see me, they're seeing angels, they're seeing demons, they're seeing things that are happening in the spirit. That's actually way more common than you would probably believe. And so it's important for us to talk about things like that because when we don't have a culture that has an understanding of the prophetic and how it operates and how the supernatural works, those people who are meant to be a gift from God to the body end up walking around believing that they're crazy. And so all the things that the Lord is showing them, they don't talk about because I don't know what to do with this. This is freaking me out. People are probably going to think I'm weird. I don't think there's a place for me in the middle of all of this. And so the enemy, through our lack of understanding and our fear of what we don't understand, shuts down and quenches what was meant to be a gift that's supposed to bring life to you and me. When we have an understanding and a grid for how the prophetic actually functions, we can call people up into their destiny who God has, again, ordained to be a part of this body to bring life. And you can even actually begin to believe that the Holy Spirit who's on the inside of you has messages for the people around you, both within the church and outside of the church. Do you know that one of the greatest evangelistic tools we actually have, as described in scripture, is the gift of prophecy? 1 Corinthians 14, which we will get to today, talks about a situation where if all of you are prophesying, Paul's talking to the Corinthian church and he's laying out this situ hypothetical situation where if everybody in the room is prophesying, then an unbeliever comes into your gathering. The secrets of his heart are laid open and he falls to his knees repenting, saying, God is truly among you. When, there, when we understand as a people how to operate in the prophetic and how God speaks in that way, then you can actually begin to listen to the Lord and hear the secrets of other people's hearts and share that with them. Say, hey, this is what I hear God saying about you. Hey, tell me, is this true or not? Do you have pain in your back? Tell me if this is true or not. You've been struggling with night terrors for the past however many years. Oh my gosh, yes, how did you know? I know somebody who knows you. I know a God who knows you and cares about you enough to talk to a complete stranger about how he wired you, how he created you, and what you were made to do, what he gifted you to do on the earth. So that's what we're talking about today. <laughs> oh man, Holy Spirit, help me and help us. God, I just pray that you would continue to just pour anointing um, on these words. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are the God who speaks. Lord, I'm actually um, calling on you that you would awaken prophetic gifts in your people today. Lord, that that's actually been something that's marked this house long even before I was ever here, long before Sean was ever here, that God, I'm calling on that deposit that you've put into the rock DNA, that you would raise up people, that some of you, I'm just gonna say it, some of you are gonna go home today and you're gonna start dreaming dreams. Some of you are gonna go home today and you're gonna start seeing visions and you're gonna hear the Lord more clearly. And some of you are gonna have a context for the way that you've been experiencing life in God from the very beginning and you just thought you were weird and maybe a little crazy. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in your people and what you're, the, the wave that you're creating in this body. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. So one of the places that I, I think is the best place to start when we talk about not just the gifts, but the prophetic in particular, is we need to strip this thing way back. Because again, we come to something like the prophetic and all of a sudden you've got a picture of either an old lady with a prayer shawl that has Hebrew on it and she doesn't even speak Hebrew. You've got pictures of some, you know, guy with a gnarly beard walking in with a staff one day, depending on the context that you're in. And sometimes some of you may have grown up in a church culture where the prophetic was about, you know, trying to call out people's sin and there wasn't love involved in how it worked. So what we need to do is we need to actually go way back to the core of how this thing works. And the truth is that the way the prophetic works 
is actually rooted more in the nature and character of God than it is in the fact that there's a gift called the gift of prophecy. Tell me, when God wanted to create the world, how did he do it? He spoke. We're talking about an all-powerful, all-knowing God. He can do this however he wants to do it. But the word tells us that when he wanted to do something, when he wants to create something, he speaks. So you are actually joined and you follow a God who when he does something, he's going to speak it first. The book of Amos tells us that a lion has roared, who can but fear? God has spoken, who can but prophesy? That when God does something, he actually speaks. And that because you are joined to that God who speaks, it's actually your birthright to hear him. John, I believe it's in chapter 10, says, my sheep hear my voice. Are you a sheep? Somebody missed out on the opportunity to say, bah. (laughs) Then you hear his voice. But Aaron, I didn't grow up in a, in a prophetic culture, but Aaron, I, I don't think I'm wired that way, but Aaron, no, stop. You're his sheep. You hear his voice. 1 Corinthians also tells us that those who have been joined to the Lord are one spirit with him. So again, we just talked about God is a God who speaks, right? When he does anything, he's going to speak it. Tell me how much sense it makes to say that you're joined spirit to spirit with that God. And now all of a sudden to say, yeah, but I, I don't hear him talking. The answer is zero. It makes zero sense. (laughs) It makes no sense. And furthermore, let's just use a few more analogies to talk about this, right? I am married to my wife, Amanda. She's in the back doing sound. I'm going to point her out because she hates it, but... (laughs) Would you say I have a healthy relationship with her? if the only way we communicate with each other is through a letter that I wrote her at the beginning of our relationship. But everything I wrote in that letter is true. It was comprehensive. I talked about how much, like what I felt for her. You're telling me that if that's, if that's all our relationship has to go off of, we're, we're not operating in a healthy, healthy framework? No? Okay. So let me add an asterisk here to say that when I'm talking about the prophetic, in no way am I diminishing this. I'm actually going after the prophetic because this book tells me I need to. And we'll get to that. And if you live your relationship with the Lord in such a way where you're never listening to his voice to you, for you, for right now, something might be a little askew there. And again, scripture tells us that you being joined to God, you are a part of a prophetic people and a prophetic community. It is your birthright. It is your birthright to hear your father's voice. Now, there are reasons that some of us might have blocks up. We might have walls up. But let me be clear. God is always speaking. Sometimes we have a listening problem. Sometimes we have a listening problem. There's a psalm that says his thoughts toward us outnumber the sands on the seashore. Somebody much nerdier than I am did a bunch of math. And we're talking about millions of zeros after that number. Millions of zeros. The prophetic, learning to hear the voice of the Lord, you just need to tune into one. You just need to hear one. 
And here's the other thing that's good news. Every single one of those thoughts about you are good. Every single one of those thoughts about you are good. All right. I'm going to preach in. I'm going to read you some scripture here. Does that sound good? Yeah. I'm going to do it whether you think it sounds good or not. So, 1 Corinthians 14, starting in verse 1. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, and especially that you may prophesy. Pause there. Does pursuing the prophetic sound like an option based on what we just read? So to tie this into something that I was talking about earlier, why do we seem to experience, I'd say, I'd call the low water level of the prophetic. You have what you ask for. And you have what you pursue. You have what you ask for. And you have what you pursue. Going into verse 2. For the person who speaks in another tongue is not speaking to people but to God. Since no one understands him, he speaks mysteries in the spirit. And here we're getting into some prophetic protocol, if I can call it that. Verse 3. On the other hand, the person who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening. Everybody say strengthening. Strengthening. Encouragement. Encouragement. And consolation. Consolation. Does that sound like good news? It should. So many times we have apprehension about operating in the prophetic or saying, God, I think you might want to say something to this person because we've got this internal belief that if I either ask for somebody to pray over me or I go to pray over somebody else, that God's going to start delivering these harsh words. He's going to say, you need to get this right. You need to get this right. You need to get this right. First off, let me say, if you are approaching the prophetic with that mindset, let me tell you, you probably need inner healing over your relationship with your earthly father. That's not a joke. (laughs) Because if you're coming to the Father and all you're expecting to hear is where you're coming up short, that gives me very real information. Again, I'm not being hyper-prophetic or spiritual here. That gives me very real information about you experienced an earthly father one way. So when you go to the God who is the source of fatherhood, if I can call it that, you've got very specific expectations about what he's going to sound like. And that is about your wounds causing you to filter the goodness of God in a particular way. Which brings up another point that I'm going to say. I'm all over the place, but you guys are going to receive a lot today. Take what you need to hear and latch on to it. Another point that we need to make, and this will heal some of you and set some of you free. Oftentimes in church history, we've come to the prophetic and to the gifts with this busted understanding that the moment I start prophesying, all of a sudden my humanity is no longer involved. What does that mean? That means that you operating even in the gift of the prophetic, who you are, your character, your life experience, your personality, you bring all of that into the moments when you're operating in the prophetic. So some of us, some of you have shied away from the prophetic because you were wounded by somebody who was operating in their gift, but had so much of their flesh in there that they weren't operating in love. Forgive them. Don't despise the prophetic. There's another scripture. It's in first, I believe it's first Thessalonians, but it talks about Don't despise prophecies. Test everything. Lord willing, next week we're going to talk about how to test the prophetic, different measures and metrics we have for that. But an initial place to start is, is it encouraging? Is it edifying? Is it going to spur that person on? It's what we just read in 1 Corinthians 14. Strengthening, encouragement, and consolation. The person who speaks in another tongue builds himself up, but the one who prophesies builds up the church. Do you want to be able to build up the church? Can I tell you that one of the most, as somebody who cares for people deeply and who is also committed to not trying to drum something up when 
I don't have anything to give. The prophetic is a godsend in those moments. Because how many of you have been with a person, been with a friend, with a family member who's either in deep grief, deep sorrow, or they need to make a decision and they're going, God, where are you? What, what, do, I, what do I need to do? And you're sitting over here very aware in yourself that like, I don't have anything to give them. But when you understand that God is a God who loves to speak, you can say, let's lean in and hear what he might have to say. And now you get to be a blessing to that person and a blessing to the body. So I think I've probably established like this is something we all want, yeah? yeah. This is something that we are actually commanded to go after, yes? All right, so I'm, today I'm condensing stuff that I would probably, in a lot of instances, take a couple of days to talk about. And one of the beautiful things about the prophetic is, and just the Lord in general, the way that he does stuff, you can spend time and time and time digging in, getting into nuances and all of this stuff. But I want to give you guys some practical frameworks for how this, this works. Amen? So I'm just going to go through a couple of ways that people tend to hear the voice of the Lord. I'll describe some of them. For some of you, this is going to set you free. Um, because, again, we approach the prophetic with certain understandings, or we have a preconceived idea of what it's supposed to be like. For example, when I started moving in the prophetic and honestly came into what you would call a spirit-filled, charismatic church for the first time, when somebody told me they had a vision, what I had in my head was you got knocked back against a wall, your eyes turned white, and you got transported somewhere. While that does happen, that's actually not one of the main ways that the Lord speaks through what we would call visions. This is a free tidbit for you. Has God given you an imagination? Might it be, could it be possible that the Lord actually wants to use your imagination as a canvas and he can use that canvas to begin to speak to you, both about the people around you, yourself, in what he's doing in the world. If I'm going to describe visions, that's one of the most basic ways I can describe it. But let's jump in. One of the first ways that God will speak to people, and you're going to need to take notes. I don't have a lot of slides for you today, unfortunately, but you seem locked in this morning. One of the first ways that people hear the Lord is I'm going to call them hearers. You're like, wow, Aaron, that's really profound. Awesome. <laughs> to put some flesh on what this looks like and how it feels, um, if you are somebody who is primarily a hearer, when the Lord speaks to you, it's in, in your mind, in your heart, you're getting like words, you're getting phrases. Um, for me, this tends to be my primary one. When I'm talking to the Lord and I'm asking him questions, I'm usually getting phrases or words or even scriptures that I've memorized in the past or has just been buried in me. The Lord's bringing those forward and you actually, you have a hearing dynamic to describe a little bit more about what this can feel like, because this, a lot of how this stuff operates has to do with how the Lord's created you as a human being. So elements of this will actually carry into the rest of your life. So I'm somebody who, and you can hate me for this if you want, I didn't have to make a lot of drafts when I was writing papers in college because the way that my brain works, and again, the way that the Lord speaks to me, is that things work in sentences and in paragraphs. So some people, you know, when you're writing a paper, you have to, you know, let, let me throw this idea in, that idea in, glom that together. Maybe that doesn't belong in that paragraph. Maybe it goes over here. But the way that the Lord's wired my brain, and oftentimes people who are hearers, the way that the Lord has wired your brain is such that I don't need to rework it because it was logical when it came out and it just flowed that way. Am I making sense? Those of you who aren't hearers are going, you are weird and I envy your paper writing capabilities. <laughs> Maybe not. Again, I'm just a nerd, so... One of the second ways, and I want to spend a little bit of time on this, 
Um, one of the, the, the second way that I see most often God speak to people and that you hear him is that you're a feeler. The, the hmms that you heard were all the feelers in the room. <laughs> let, me, let me describe this dynamic to you a little bit. Um, God made your emotions, yes? In case you didn't know, he did. Your emotions were not a product of the fall. Some of you need to ponder that for a minute. And again, if the way that the prophetic works and we can expect it is because we're joined spirit to spirit with God, in case you didn't notice, he's the most emotional one in that book. <laughs> so when we talk about somebody who is a feeler, the Lord will speak to you and you hear him most clearly in what I would call the seat of your emotions. Let me describe for you what this looks like. Your life is going well. Work is going well. Family relationships are going well. But you woke up and there's just something off. And most often, it started pretty much out of the blue. You're feeling a little weird. You're like, I don't, like something, something feels off. Like I'm... And you're cognizant of it. You're like, everything around me right now, like circumstances, this all feels pretty normal, but for some reason, something is just going on inside of me, and I cannot, like, I cannot shake this. Another way that this, to get incredibly practical, some of you, for example, will walk into a grocery store, and when you walk in, you're completely fine. You walk past one person or you're just kind of in that environment in that atmosphere, you leave and you're like, I was not depressed when I woke up this morning. Why am I feeling this right now? Because the way that the Lord's wired you, you're sensitive in, again, your emotions to what he's feeling, what he's experiencing in his own heart. And sensitive to what's going on around you in the spirit. And the way that that manifests for you is like, ah, oh, there's something's off or like everybody around me seems pretty somber, but I feel like jumping up and down for joy right now. Or what, what is this? And the reason I want to spend some time on this one is because you feelers tend to be the ones who most often think you're going nuts. And a lot of that has to do with just the culture that we have here in America that places an incredibly low value on emotions that tells you, you know, like, well, that's cool that you're feeling depressed today, but stuff's got to get done. So shove that down to deal with later and let's get going. <laughs> Issue is, mm, I'll get too sidetracked if I go there. Anyway. <laughs> this is a flow, in case you didn't notice. I will touch on this, though. Um, do you understand this concept that what you agree with, you empower? So if you're a feeler and you're not aware of it, I can put it that way, and you spend most of your life feeling stuff that doesn't actually belong to you, but because you don't know that you can be experiencing, one, either things from the Lord or things from other people, and now all of a sudden you come into agreement with, I was totally fine, but that was, now I'm saying, I'm depressed. When in reality, if you were to check in with yourself, you're like, no. That thing jumped on me when I was praying for so-and-so who said, ironically enough, I'm feeling depressed right now. Or that thing jumped on me when I did this, or I started to feel it around this circumstance. And now all of a sudden you've come into agreement with that thing. You have, and if you've got questions about this, I'm happy to talk to you more about it later, but I can't do a whole deep dive on this right now. But if you are a feeler and you come into agreement with that thing, now all of a sudden something that was not yours, the enemy has an open door to say like, oh, I wasn't even really trying to get you feel depressed, but since you're, you seem intent on owning this, let's just push that button. 
So all my, all my feelers in the room, can you stand up? Because I want to I wanna pray for you really quick. If you have to wonder, you're probably not a feeler. <laughs> and all the feelers in the room laughed, so there you go. <laughs> um, if you guys see somebody standing around you, can you just put a hand on them? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys a tool here that's going to help you. And I want you to pray this and just repeat after me. Just say, in Jesus' name, I ask you, Holy Spirit, to cleanse the emotional bridge between me and every other person with your light and fire. I give back what's not mine, and I take back what is mine. Father, I give you every burden I'm bearing that doesn't belong to me. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Feels a little better, huh? <laughs> All right, you can sit down. So feelers, one of the things that you're going to need to get good at doing is noticing and checking in with yourself and then saying when something feels off, okay, God, what is this? Whose is this? And what are you trying to tell me? Right? God, what is this? Whose is this? And what are you trying to tell me? You'll be surprised how often what you're experiencing doesn't actually belong to you. Number three, we have knowers. And again, everybody who just chuckled is probably a knower. Because again, so much of this is built into how God created you as a person. But to describe somebody who is a knower, and that's one of the main ways you hear the Lord, um, you are somebody whose intuition is very rarely wrong, if I can put it that way. And it can be when you're praying for somebody or when you're facing a situation at work, you come into this thing and you're just like, nope, we need to do this. And people are like, well, give me the logic behind that. How do I know that we need to do this? And you're like, I don't know. I, we're just supposed to do it. And you end up making the, uh, if I can put it this way, oftentimes you make the hearers around you a little bit frustrated because they're like, give me logic, give me a dream, give me something to, you know, like something to run off of. And you're like, nope, gut says that way. So we're going that way. So you're actually wired. And again, this is, if I had to describe this to give more language to it, again, you're one spirit with him. So there's something in you and the way that he's wired you deep down on a gut level that you're lined up and tuned in with the Father and with the Holy Spirit in such a way where you just, it's a you know that you know that you know that you know. And I will say, as a tidbit for those of you who hear the Lord this way, you probably have a gift of faith as well. You probably have a gift of faith as well because to describe it, there are just certain situations that you walk into where something kicks on on the inside of you and all of a sudden you just, again, know that you know that you know that God's going to come through in this way. For me, the way that that kicks in primarily is deliverance. People getting set free from the demonic. Um, and I talk about this to give you guys hope because there's something kind of pervasive within Christian culture where because we're uncomfortable with the idea that people can be demonized and then set free, and particularly what can happen in circumstances where somebody is getting set free, you've, mm, let me put it another way. For a lot of Christians, the only experience they have with demons getting cast out of people is watching The Exorcist. <laughs> Which, for those of you who have done deliverance before, 99.9% .9 of the time it doesn't look like that. <laughs> So Hollywood is actually, I'm not going to go fully down this rabbit hole, stay on track, Aaron. Hollywood is actually, because we've refused in many instances to follow after the word of God about getting people delivered from demons, Hollywood has stepped in and said, well, I mean, I can paint that picture for you. 
and there's infinitely more fear in there than God designed you to operate in. So for me, when the gift of faith activates, it's usually in a meeting where we're going after healing because the demonic loves to distract. Um, I'll hear somebody, you know, start going off. Somebody shrieks over in the corner and I know exactly what that is. And something flips on on the inside of me that says, nope, not today. And actually praise God because you're going to get set free right now. So you knowers, that situation that I just described is going to feel very familiar to you. And then the last one that we have is seers. So for those of you who are seers, you probably, and the Lord has designed you to hear him this way. You're probably somebody who dreams frequently. You're probably somebody who grew up with a very active imagination that you've always got something going on in the background of your mind. And again, I'll put this idea forward this way. Jesus, God in the flesh, is actually, if I can put it this way, prophesying to us about what new creation looks like. So do you think that God in the flesh, who is again fully man as well as fully God, do you think that he had a fully redeemed imagination that the Lord could speak and move through? Again, because we live in a culture that in very many ways was shaped by the enlightenment, uh, shaped by what I would call naturalism is the, the technical philosophical term for it, but what that means is essentially we have a culture that's shaped by the only thing that is real is something that I can touch, feel, hear, smell with my senses, which has provided benefits for us in one regard, but in another regard has caused us to completely push down the totem pole of importance, if I can put it that way, things like your imagination and your emotions, which as we've discussed are two of the ways that the Lord actually wants to speak to his people. So some of you, I'm just going to follow this rabbit trail for a minute. Some of you, you've actually been wired to hear God through visionary experiences, but because of where you grew up, how you grew up, you've actually been shamed and shut down for that. And ever since that happened to you, you have not felt like yourself. Some of you got little question marks popping up over your heads right now, and that's fine. We're, we're, again, taking one Sunday morning to delve into what is a very large topic, but I want to get you guys fired up for this stuff. And I want you to understand that God wants to speak to you, and he wants to speak through you. How many of you guys, this was helpful for you today? Okay. This is good. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to stand. We're just going to take a minute. So if you can just turn your hearts, your attention, your affection to Jesus. And just pray with me and just say, come Holy Spirit. Another simple thing to grab onto. Revelation tells us that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So if you're ever saying, Lord, I want to engage with this, I want to pursue this like your word tells me to, but I don't know where to start, just turn your heart and your attention to Jesus. So, Jesus, we just invite you to come. Come in the room.
So I just believe that um, there are some people the Lord just wants to activate you in this. Um, and sometimes when he's doing that, uh, one of the signs that he'll give is we'll start to feel physical sensations in our bodies. So I'm just going to take some time to listen to the Lord and we're just going to go on this journey together, okay? I got one amen. That's all I need. <laughs> Um, I believe that there's a few of you who, once we started praying, your, your ears started getting really hot. If that's you, can you, lift a, can you lift a hand at me? So we've got one, two, three. So keep, if that's you, keep your hand lifted really, really high because we want people to put a hand on your shoulder and just agree. So family, if you could look around and see these people with their hands lifted. Um, we, the Lord's actually just marking these people. It's not that he's not activating and marking others, but we, we just want to flow with what the Holy Spirit is doing, where he's going, what he's saying. So just put a hand on him. Um, and for others of you, um, you're starting to feel, best I can describe it, you're feeling something that feels like power, electricity, swirling around in your gut in like a deep spot. If that's you, can you lift your hand? Because we want to pray for you too. All right. Everybody keep looking. Keep your hand lifted high until somebody's got a hand on your shoulder. We are no man left behind today. <laughs> so come Holy Spirit. Just invite the Holy Spirit to come touch them. Just pray prayers like, I bless what you're doing, Lord. So come Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, for more. I thank you, Lord, for more. Thank you for more. Um, this woman right here in the, in the uh, dress with the blonde hair, yeah. Um, the, Lord, the Holy Spirit's just falling on you right now, and I'm seeing, to bring you guys into sort of how this can look, I'm seeing something like swirling around your head, but I'm seeing things lift off. Um, and I just, part of what I believe this means is that you're somebody who's been attacked in your dreams a lot. Um, and the, is this accurate? Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So you're, you're somebody who's been tormented in your dreams a lot. And I believe that even right now today, the Lord is just marking you and saying, um, we're just going to agree as a body to say no more night terrors and actually just believe that that what the enemy tried to use to scare you, God actually planted in your life for good to communicate with you as his daughter. So family, if you could just stretch hands out over here. What was your name? Stacy. Father, we thank you for Stacy. Um, God, we just agree that you are marking her as a dreamer, that you're marking her as somebody with a prophetic gift, that seer dimension. And God, we just curse and break off every bit of darkness that the enemy would try to launch at her mind. Um, and we actually command, again, one of the things we talk about, I'm going to teach and prophesy at the same time so that you guys can kind of flow with what I'm talking about. Um, oftentimes, when you start to move with the Holy Spirit in this way, things will start to bubble up, and you'll start to see things, um, and they'll sort of relate to both healing, destiny, things like that. So what I'm seeing right now is I'm seeing something that looks like a clamp at the base of your skull, um, and oftentimes that can be related to like pain in your body and stiffness. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's accurate. Okay. So Father, we just put, can somebody just put your hand on the back of her head right there? Um, Father, we just bless the healing that's coming to her body right now in Jesus' name. We thank you that you're releasing fire in her body and in her neck right now in Jesus' name. We command healing to come, peace to come over her in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. So part of why we're flowing this way is, number one, we just believe the Lord's doing it. Um, and two, um, I'm only doing half of my job if I just tell you about it, but don't show you what it looks like. Yeah? Um, sir, right here in the Stanford shirt. <laughs> I know, I saw you looking like, please let it be the guy behind me. But <laughs> um, Can you guys gather around him and just put, put hands on him? And remind me of your name, man. 
Nikki? N Nikki, okay. Um, so, Father, we just thank you for Nikki. Um, and we just, hey, more Lord. More Lord. More Lord. More Lord. So those of you who are, again, we want all of you kind of engaged with what's going on here, but those of you who are seers, I want you to kind of engage your faith, if I can put it that way, and look over towards Nikki. Because what I'm seeing right now and why I said more, Lord, is before we even started praying, I started seeing, you know, something that I would describe looks sort of like gold dust or gold glitter kind of flowing around him, which the more you do this, the more you'll start to understand the Lord uses things um, both that we see in scripture and also as you develop your listening ear, you'll start to understand like, oh, when he shows me this, it's usually this. Or when he shows me this, it's usually that. So when I see what I'm seeing right now, that just tells me that the Lord's already on him. So I'm praying more Lord before I launch into the other stuff that I've seen because the Lord's already doing something there. Um, so Father, I thank you for more, more, more. Um, Nikki, the, uh, the Lord is actually setting you, I think physically he's setting you free from fatigue right now. Um, you're, you're somebody who, we've got laughter and, from, and confirmation from friends and family, so that's usually a good sign. Um, the Lord's just setting you free from fatigue right now because I think that there was something that, uh, I didn't know this. Did, have you had a concussion? Is that a thing that's happened? years ago. So f the, the Lord just brought that up. So I'm just going to pray over it. So Father, in Jesus name, wherever his body um, and his adrenal and nervous systems have been affected by a concussion, we just command that trauma to lift off of him in Jesus name and to go in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for touching his body right now in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Um, and Nikki, the other thing, I'm looking and it's like over the top of your head, I'm seeing different scenes play out. Um, you have been, I saw you stand up for the feeler portion, but uh, you've been somebody who's had a heart so big, um, literally for as long as you can remember. Um, and I just believe even that part of what the Lord's doing right now is he's um, just cutting off words that have been launched at you from classmates, from um, even teachers. Uh, people who didn't know what to do with your heart and they saw you feeling and saw you crying and they just tried to shut that down because it made them uncomfortable. And um, I just even believe right now the Lord is setting you free. So Father, in Jesus' name, um, we just declare a breaking off of word curses that have been spoken over Nikki. Um, I break off words like um, soft. I break off words um, like too much. And Father, I thank you that you're releasing freedom and that um, that softness of heart is actually a gift of God that you've placed inside of him. Um, and Father, I thank you just for the prophetic unction and the prophetic spirit that you've placed on him, Jesus. Um, Father, I thank you for freedom in his mind, freedom in his body, in Jesus' name. And that was all stuff that the Lord didn't even uh, give me to start off with. So Nikki, you are somebody who's been marked for leadership. You're somebody who's been, um, you're somebody who's been marked for leadership. Um, and that I can, I probably have a, an ability to see into this with you because I've experienced similar things in myself, but um, you've been marked for leadership and people keep wanting to put you in positions and you're like, can you please find anybody else? <laughs> please not me. Um, and there's actually just a humility that you've said yes to in the Lord that he find, God just finds so wildly attractive about you. And that's why he keeps giving you opportunity. It's not, it's not because you're supposed to hold this pedestal place for people. You see that, you're like, that's gross, I don't want that. Um, but it's because he sees your heart and he says, I, I can trust these people to Nikki. So Father, we thank you for freedom in him we thank you for releasing him into just the leadership grace that's on his life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Friends and family, um, some of you guys got words for him while we were praying, so give those to him. Keep praying for him. Um, so one of the other operations of the prophetic, sorry, I'm like, 
you'll start to understand that as you start to step into this stuff, um, as you're obedient to say what the Lord's saying, he oftentimes gives more. So if you see me kind of trying to find my bearing, it's because the Lord's talking while I'm also trying to, you know, be like, maintain order. People got to go get their kids. Um, one of the other ways that the prophetic, or I should say hearing the Lord's voice can operate is through words of knowledge, which is to give that definition, factual information that we would otherwise have no way of knowing. Like, um, you saw that partially with Nikki over there. I didn't know that he had had a concussion um, or when it had happened, but as I was praying, it was just like, boom, concussion. I'm like, okay, Lord, let's follow that rabbit trail and see if, see if that's what it is. So um, Brandon actually had a couple of words of knowledge that I'm going to have him share. Um, we're going to share these um, so that you guys can hear it, identify it with it. Once we call those out, we're gonna say you're released to go get your kids because I know that they're probably crawling the walls at this point. Um, but it, even if you're somebody who, you know, that word of knowledge is for me and you need to go get your kids, go get them and come back because what the Lord, this is kind of a, you know, it sounds like a dad saying, but what the Lord reveals, he intends to heal. And if you can remember that, uh, that will serve you well. So I'm gonna have Brandon share what the Lord's putting on his heart. I'm a feeler, can you tell? <clears throat> uh, so when I walked in service today, my ears would not stop ringing. Uh, I often, the way that I hear the Lord is, I, a lot of times, especially for other people, it's one thing when you're praying for them and things start to flow, but uh, I feel things in my body. So I'll feel sensations. And sometimes it's a fraction of what other people feel, and sometimes it's very intense. But my, uh, my ears have been ringing. Uh, my head, inside of my head, has been ringing. And I've done this long enough. Sometimes, so, sometimes he talks about, like, you, when you've done it enough times, you know what something feels like or what something sounds like or what something looks like. Uh, and, in, and in my case, it's tinnitus. So uh, has anybody been diagnosed with tinnitus? All right, here, here, here. All right, about five of you. All right, if you see someone with their hand raised, you just go lay your hands on them, six of you. And anyone in general that has any kind of ringing um, sensation, and maybe you don't even know if it's tinnitus, right there, right there. Can, hey, raise your hand, lock it out, guys. You can't be ashamed to be healed, okay? Yep, extend the elbow, lock it out. And Lord, we just thank you that you want to demonstrate your power today, your love for your body. So we just command all tonight is to go in Jesus' name. We command the body to work the way that it was designed. So everything that doesn't belong in the, in the head, in the eardrums, in the equilibrium, we just, command, we just command that to go. We just command all of those things to be restored the way that you designed them. And we bless every single person that has stepped forward and says, yes, Lord, heal me. We bless their bodies. We bless their, uh, their, their minds, their spirits in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, was there anybody that was hearing ringing and no longer hears it? Right there. Thank you, Lord. Two. Thank you, Lord. Good. <clears throat> So, so guys, this is, this shows you, this, what this is doing right now is the Lord wants to, to build your faith. There's something that gets unlocked when people are healed. When, you, when one person is healed and, and the body is present, there is something that happens in you. Your faith grows. And a lot of times when I pray for people, when I first started praying for people, I had no faith because I didn't know what was going to happen. And the knowing gift developed in me because I said, I would always say, I'm just going to join my faith with yours. Is that okay? Yeah. And we're just going to believe for your healing. That's how it started. So right now, guys, your faith is being built. And so if you have any uh, sensation, in your, if you have any pain in your body right now, I just want you to just gently test it out. Uh, maybe just bend over a little bit if it's, if it's back pain. 
uh, if you have a shoulder injury, just start working your shoulder, whatever it is. I want you to kind of test your body out. And, I, and, and, and so, Lord, we just bless the body in Jesus' name. Would you, just, would you just heal them? Just test it out and just have the faith that he can heal you without us even praying for anything. Because he can, and he has, and he will continue to. So if you are dealing with any pain in your body uh, whatsoever and you feel 25% better than you did, you feel any difference, just raise your hand for me. Good. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. We bless you in Jesus' name. <clears throat> now, now, I have this saying because often, and we're not going there, but often we have kind of a, a scale that we use when people are, are being healed. Like, hey, is it on a one low or 10 high pain scale? So if he, and I always say, if someone has an improvement and they go from a nine to a five, I'm like, well, he wouldn't want to take it to a five and not take it to a four. Let's pray again. So, so if, uh, if you felt 25% or better, just raise your hand. Love it. Okay. So I want, I want you guys, keep your hand raised, keep your hand raised. I want you guys to lay your hands on them and just say, I bless you in Jesus name. That's it. I bless you in Jesus name. Yes, yes, bless you in Jesus' name, yes. All right, now test your body out again. If there's any improvement, I want you to wave your hand at me now. All right, Stephen, love it, yes, Jesus' name, back there in the back, in Jesus' name. All right, who's... Is there anyone that's 100% better? They feel no more pain at all. Come here. Come here. Hey, man, come on up. What was your name? Juan. Juan, what, what were you dealing with before we started praying? I had back lower pain, like pretty painful pain in my back, okay. lower back. And, and so you had back pain and you tested it out and... No pain. All right. Do, do something you couldn't do before. Do something you couldn't do before. Yeah. My man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Lord. <clears throat> so there's some of you that when you saw him bend over, you were healed. So if you feel better after he just came up, if you feel an improvement, raise your hand. I know there were some of you. That's okay. Good. All right. Bless you in Jesus' name. Great. Well, that covers sciatic pain. That was another pain that I was feeling. Um, so I, I really, I really think that there, uh, there, uh, there's also shooting nerve pain throughout people's body. I was feeling it in my calf. I was feeling it in my bicep. Um, so if you have any kind of circulatory issues or nerve pain, would you just raise your hand for me? All right. Right here, right here, Eric, right here. Put hands on them, guys. You know the drill by now. And just know that if the Lord healed you, why wouldn't he heal the person you pray for? It's always his will. Yep. So, Lord, we pray over all the circulatory systems, everything in the body, would, would everything open up and have space? And we bless these bodies at the molecular level, in Jesus' name. All inflammation must go, in Jesus' name, amen. I know we gotta wrap up here, so just a couple more. Again, keep praying for them. If you feel led to pray for them, keep praying for them. Um, I. I really believe that the Lord is crushing beliefs that no longer serve you. I, I truly feel that. And one of those is seeing what some of you have never seen anything like this. And I really feel like he is crushing your belief that, that God heals or that God will heal you. And, he, and he's reframing the way you see him right now. He is just changing the way you will never be the same. But know this, moments like this in church with the music, it's easy. But the same power that's here is the same power that is at work, is the same power that is at home, 
is the same power. All you have to do is believe. Right, Micah? <laughs> Lastly, just to wrap up. Um, Vanessa t touched on it earlier that, you know, I've had 10 years of, of chronic pain and, and I know that uh, I've had conversations with a lot of you that have had, you know, chronic illness and chronic pain and even autoimmune. But I, I go through, have gone through the roller coaster of being in pain all the time, every second of the day. And I wouldn't talk about it because I didn't want to be a burden, because I didn't want to be weak. Whatever it was, I would have these times where I'd have this really, really bad pain that I couldn't talk about, and I'd deal with it. And then I'd say, Lord, heal me, and then I didn't get healed. So I'd have the disappointment, right? And, and so I'd go through this roller coaster, but there's something over time as disappointment happens where you make this agreement. And like, okay, this is just my life. And, you, and people even speak that over you too. Like, oh, well, this is just your burden to bear. This is your thorn. And I just don't believe that to be true. So I, right now, I just want you guys to agree with me. Just put your hand on your heart. If you've been dealing with, or someone you love has been dealing with uh, chronic illness, pain, autoimmune, cancer, I just want you to say, I break agreement with chronic illness. I break agreement with cancer. I break agreement with autoimmune disease, either on myself or my family or my loved ones. Lord, I know you love me. Heal me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. La last thing I'm going to do um, before I release everybody. Um, my two friends right here that have these like purple or bluish dresses. So yeah, the one you, you who are looking behind you, um, wit, and then just behind right here, which, yeah, which one of you has back issues? No back pain. Okay. So we hear in part and we prophesy in part. So let this be a little bit of a learning thing. Sometimes we step out and we miss it. And God still uses us and loves us. Amen. Part of, just to give you context for that, I came into the service seeing a picture of a purple dress and then somebody's spine was highlighted. So maybe that's you and I'm just not seeing you come find me. But I would always rather risk being wrong because, um, so I'm going to pray for us really quick. Father, I thank you for what you're releasing in this body and I thank you for what you've begun. God, in Jesus' name, we seal the breakthroughs, the words, the healings with the blood of Jesus. We just declare that the enemy does not get to come back with backlash, um, with night terrors, or with pain in the body that was healed. God, we thank you for grace and inspiration to stand on what you've done and how you've moved us forward. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. amen.